Alright, this is our first lesson from the Absolute Value and Reciprocal Functions Unit, Unit 8. Uh, lesson 8.1, Absolute Value Functions. We've already dealt with absolute values a little bit in that, uh, you know, we learned that uh, when you take the absolute value of something, it basically uh, makes it always positive. And so now what we're going to look at is what happens to its function. Specifically, we're going we're gonna to graph in this uh, lesson. Alright, so let's get started. An absolute value function has the form y equals the absolute value of f of x, where f of x is a function. The x-intercept of the graph y equals f of x is what we call a critical point. All right? And at this point, what you're going to see is the graph's going to change direction. So the graph of the absolute value you're going to see is going to uh, be something that you've really never seen before. It's going to be related to um, a linear graph, um, but you'll see at that certain critical point, things are going to change. Okay? So uh, basically all we just do here is we're just going to jump right into an example and uh, take a look at what happens. So example one, graphing uh, the absolute value of a linear function. It says sketch the, val sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of 3x plus 6. Identify the intercepts, domain, and range of the function. So let's go ahead and do this. Now my first little note for you right here is that what I want you to do whenever you're dealing with the, an absolute value function is just go and graph the function as though there were not um, absolute values in front of it. So do you see that uh, what I want you to graph then? So graph the function y equals 3x plus 6 first. Okay, so what this is going to be, and I'll do this in blue over here, is it's just going to be a linear function. So we should be confident with this. So if this is 0, 0 here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, my y-intercept of 6. And then we have my slope. My slope is 3x, so that's 3 over 1. We go up 1, 2, 3 over 1. And I'm going to add a couple more points on here to try and make it as accurate as I can. Let's see, and we get all the way down to there. Okay, and you can grab your ruler and uh, try to make this straight. And we have our linear function. Okay, So the next step, and so I'll make note of this over here, is next, since the function cannot have negative y values reflect the graph over the x-axis for negative values of what? All right. So what I'm, uh, and I'll do this in red right here, okay, so I'll just make, uh, make that be known. Um, basically what you're going to see here with the absolute value graph is everything that is positive, so I'm talking about these points, is just going to stay the same. All right. Um, even this point right here is going to stay the same because technically the absolute value of that would just be the same. But when you take the absolute value of this negative 3 right here, that changes and the absolute value ends up being reflected. So this would be if it's 3 units down, it's going to be 3 units up. If this unit is then 6 down, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units up. And this one that's down 9 is going to be up 9 like so. And so in red here, this would be what the graph of the absolute value function looks like. It's actually this red line right here, and you'll see that it makes a V like so. All right. So the absolute value of a linear function makes a V like that. All right. So fairly straightforward, I think. Um, just take a look at the, the values that fall below the graph and just reflect them um, over the X uh, axis like so. All right. Now in this uh, question, they also wanted us to figure out what the, uh, the intercepts were, the domain, and the range. All right. So let's go... Uh, Let's go and figure out what our, I'll shrink this up a little bit so we can see everything at once. Let's go figure out what our uh, intercepts are, the x-intercept. So where does this intersect, uh, the x-axis intersects at negative 2 right here? Uh, what about my y-intercepts? Well, let's take a look. What do we see? We see the intersected right here, and that was uh, your y-intercept from the original linear equation was 6. Okay. And lastly, the domain and my range. The domain. If you think of this right, the graph goes infinitely left, infinitely right. So therefore, just like quadratics, we can say that x is a member of the 
the reals. It can be anything that we want. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about the range. Now, this really su shouldn't surprise you for this. The range is saying that, of course, because we have absolute values, you can't have anything that's down in this region up here, so everything has to be higher than that, so therefore, y must be greater than or equal to zero. Everything must be positive. Okay? So that's the first example in the books. Let's go into example two here. So it says, graphing the absolute value of a quadratic function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how does this change, right, when we take the absolute value of a quadratic. So um, for each of the following, again, they want the graph, and they want you to determine the intercepts and the domain and range. Well, first thing I want you to note when you take a look at uh, this graph right here is that notice how this is actually in the still in the format y equals a onto x minus p all squared plus q, okay, our standard form like so. Well, what do I see with that? Well, remember, the a is what does your um, compression or your um, stretching. The p is going to move the graph left or right, and the q is going to move it up or down. So in blue right here, I'll put that in blue, I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, graph this to see what we would originally have. All right. So that uh, the first thing you do here right, is you always try and find where your um, vertex would be of the graph. So I'm going to move the x plus 2 tells me I move 2 in the negative direction. Then I go up 2, so that's where the graph's going to start right here. And what else do I see? Well, I see that it has a negative 2, so the graph's going to open down, and it has a... Um, it's going to basically be stretched, right? Because whenever this number is greater than 1, it's going to get stretched. Um, by a factor of 2. So I go over 1 instead of it's normally over 1, down 1. This time it's going to be over 1, down 2, down 2. Normally it's over 2, down 4, but twice 4 is going to be 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8 like so. And that's going to be the last one that you can fit on this graph. So therefore we will go and we will graph this. Okay. And just so that we are sure what's going on here, I'm just going to label this, right? So this is the graph of y equals negative 2 uh, x plus 2 all squared plus 2. Okay, So note that that is just the regular function. I haven't dealt with the reciprocal, right? And so now in red, what I'm going to do is in red, uh, maybe I'll just make note of this. In red, I'll graph y is equal to the absolute value of negative 2, x plus 2 squared plus 2, like so. Well, no different than what we dealt with the linear function, right? Everything that's above the x-axis is just going to stay there. So that point in red is going to stay there. This point is going to stay there. But now everything that's below is just going to be reflected above. And you're going to see it's going to make a kind of a crazy looking uh, W shape right here. So this is down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So it's going to be up 6, 2, 4, 6, like so, and like so. And lo and behold, that is what the graph is going to resemble. Okay, So a W like you see. And then I'll label this one. This is y is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 onto x plus 2 all squared plus 2. All right. So we've uh, we've graphed the function and now we simply just want to take a look at, uh, now that we've graphed it, right, it's easier to figure out what your um, domain and range are and our intercepts. So let's start with our intercepts here. So let's do the x-intercept, and then we'll do the y-intercept. So my x-intercepts. Um, notice that this is an example. It won't always be the case, but this one has two of them. We have an x-intercept at a negative 3, and we have one right here at a negative 1. And the y-intercept, we have one up here at 6, like so. The domain, again, notice how this graph, just like parabolas, it goes infinitely to the left and right. So we'd say that x is a member of the reals. It can be anything that we want and the range. Again, shouldn't really surprise you, everything has to be above this x-axis, so y must be greater than or equal to zero like so. Okay. Um, I'd encourage you to maybe try this next one on your own. Uh, what does throw people off a little bit here is that they don't think that this is in this format, but still is in this uh, format when you go and graph a, uh, a quadratic. All right. All right, in blue what I will do is I will graph negative 3x squared minus 1, and in red I will do y is equal to the absolute value of this. Okay, so let's do the blue graph first. Um, notice that, like I said, it is in this format right here. It just means that since I don't have anything in the brackets, that we've moved the graph over to the left or right, basically 0, but we moved it down 1. So my uh, y-intercept would be down here at negative 1. Okay, and the graph has a negative 3, so we'd expect the graph to open down. It has a stretch factor of uh, negative 3, so the step pattern, instead of going over 1, down 1, I'm going to go over 1, down 3. 1, 2, and 3, like so, and like so. 
Normally I'd go now over to down 4, but this one would be down 12. You can't fit that on there, so just make sure that when you draw this graph, it stays inside this line right here, and it stays inside this line right there. Okay. And so now if I want you to uh, give me the absolute value of it, uh, you'll notice I'm just going to reflect everything over the x-axis. And this one's kind of interesting in that nothing really touches, right? So if it's at negative 1 right here, the um, absolute value of it is going to be at positive 1. This one's at, um, let's see right here, it's down 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one's going to be up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4. And lo and behold, we have our graph. Okay, so this one in red, of course, is that guy there, and this was the blue one, like so. Okay, so let's answer those questions that we need to again, the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. You should be okay with doing this. So, x-intercepts, of course, we don't have any, right? It doesn't cross the x-axis, y-intercepts. Um, we have, of course, the, the y-intercept is at the vertex right there, so that is at 1. Uh, what do we see about the domain and range? So my domain, well, if you look again, the graph goes infinitely to the left and, uh, and to the right, so we would say that x is a member of the reals, right? We should be used to that from the units before. And my range here, right? Well, everything is from this point going upwards, so we'd say that y must be greater than or equal to 1, like so. Okay. Uh, lastly, we're going to get on to uh, something a little bit different on this page. Piecewise, Notation is used to describe a function that has different definitions for different subsets of the domain. So the absolute value of a number is often defined using piecewise notation. Now, why is this the case? Well, if you think about the graph that we just learned about for the absolute value of x, so let's think of the graph y equals x. Well, the graph y equals x as just like, if this is my axis like that, it's actually just a straight line that goes through like that, right? But the graph of the absolute value of f of x, if I put it in brackets here, it actually is two kind of separate graphs. It's this graph to here, and then it's that graph to there, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can kind of define that like we do right here. So the graph of uh, the absolute value of x is actually equal to the graph of y equals x, or just x, only when, though, x is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so that's in this region right here. But it's actually equal to, if you think about what that graph is, that's the graph of y equals negative x. So the absolute value of x is actually equal to negative x when x is less than 0. So those values are when x is less than 0, like so. All right, And so we're going to try to do that for each one of these. All right, So think back. I'm going to always give you guys a little bit of a sketch here so you can see how this is going to relate. So how um, the absolute value of a graph changes depending on uh, what the scenario is that you have. All right? So <clears throat> for case number one here, we're going to break these up into cases. It says rate to each function in P, so this should be a wise W, wise notation. All right, so case number one. What happens when we take this graph and uh, we graph it for values that are greater than or equal to zero? Well, think about what this graph would look like. Y is equal to 2x minus 1. Right? The graph would have, this is just kind of a sketch, but have a y-intercept right here at negative 1. And it would have a slope of 2, so the graph would look something like so. Let's say it looks something like that, right? Well, what do we know? We know that all of this part right here is actually going to be reflected right there, right? And so we're wondering, like, what is the actual equation for that part? And what is the actual equation for that part? And how do we determine it? Well, here's how you go about doing it. <clears throat> so for case number one, x is greater than 0. That's what we're going to test. We're text testing these points right here when x is greater than or equal to 0. So what I want you to do is you always get rid of the absolute value signs. And we just go 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And you just solve for this. We get 2x is greater than or equal to 1 or x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So we've solved that part. What that means, right, folks, is that when x is greater than 1 half, so this is the 1 half point right here. When x is greater than that, you should expect the graph to be above it. All right. And so to find the other ones, what we do is we set up case number 2 over here. And so for this one, all you do is you take the absolute value of it, 2x minus 1, and set it less than 0. All right. So I get 2x is less than 1, and x is less than 1 half. 
All right. So that's going to be the x values when this happens. Now, if you want to find out what this graph is, right? Because we know that this graph over here is the graph of y equals 2x minus 1. Well, what you do to find what this graph is over here 